Before executing a final production render, of course, you'll need to set the render parameters or settings in order to balance render time with image quality. We saw how to do that using the ART Autodesk Ray Tracer renderer in the chapter on lighting. Now let's look at the render settings for the new global illumination renderer, which is Arnold. And I want to mention at this point that Arnold is developed completely separately and independently from 3ds Max. Arnold is a plugin, and that plugin is updated more frequently than 3ds Max is. It's always a good idea to stay up to date with the Arnold plugin because new features and bug fixes are being added all the time. So you can go to the Solid Angle website, which is solidangle.com, and you will need to register in order to download the plugin. But once you've done that, you can go to the Arnold section, and under Downloads, there will be a link for Arnold for 3ds Max and you can download that. Okay, so that's the Solid Angle website. Now let's look at the Arnold settings in 3ds Max. I've got that open. Let's go into the Render Setup dialog and switch the renderer over from Scanline to Arnold. And the first thing we want to do here before we attempt to render even any preview is to go into the System tab. And there are some very important settings in here. First and foremost, this switch is really critical. Legacy 3DS Max map support. If you have any procedural maps in your scene, even a simple noise map, Arnold will not be able to render that unless this switch is on. You need to turn that switch on. And we see a warning here that says this option only works in Max to A and is not supported in exported Arnold scene source files. Well, what does that mean? It means that this switch to support the 3ds Max procedural maps will only function when you do a render from 3ds Max. You can't export a .ass file, which is an Arnold proprietary scene file format, and then render 3ds Max procedural maps. But very few users are going to use the .ass format to render. Basically, you're always going to be rendering the 3ds Max scene file in some back burner or other network rendering application. Okay, so that needs to be on. Otherwise, all your procedural maps are going to render black. Down here is another cool setting. This determines how many threads or cores will render. The system I'm on currently has got a staggering number of cores. It's very fast. But if I used all of the cores, then I wouldn't be able to do anything else with the computer. 100% of the CPU time would be taken up by the render job. We can turn auto detect threads off and we can manually determine how many threads or cores we want to render on. And I know that I actually have 24 cores on the current workstation. So I could type in 24 there. But what's even better is to put in a negative value here. The spinner, if we click on this, we can take it down to zero or even into negative numbers. And this means that Arnold will render on all of the cores except for one. And that leaves a little bit of overhead for me to, for example, check my email or whatever. All right, so that's a really cool feature of Arnold. Okay, so those are the system settings. Now let's go over to the Arnold Renderer tab to adjust the Arnold settings. And at first glance, this looks a little bit intimidating. If you're used to Mental Ray or ART, there's more going on here. It's a bit more complex, but that gives us the power to dial in the exact quality versus render time that we need. You'll see that there are two columns here, samples and ray depth. Samples is the number of calculations per pixel for each one of these components of the rendering. And ray depth is the number of rays or bounces in the scene. Ray depth is kind of important, especially for global illumination. With a ray depth of one, that particular rendering component, such as the diffuse surface, will be visible to the camera. But there will be no bounces among surfaces in the scene. 
So the diffuse component will be visible here, but there will be no global illumination with a diffuse rays of only one. I'm going to increase the diffuse rays up to three. And that means we have one ray for the object to be visible to the camera, and then two bounces of that diffuse illumination. We could increase this further, but of course that's going to increase our render times. Then we have specular, that of course is the highlights. And I don't need the specular highlights to bounce around in the scene. So I can leave that specular at its default of one ray. Specular surfaces will be visible to the camera, but that specular light will not bounce around in the scene. Transmission is for refractions or the bending of light through a transparent or translucent volume. And it's got a ray depth of one, meaning that transparent objects will be visible, but there will be no light bouncing around. I actually don't have any transparent objects in my scene currently, so this doesn't matter at all. But if I wanted to completely turn off refractions, I could set transmission rays to zero. We've also got the samples column, and that's the number of calculations per pixel for each one of these components. And once again, I don't have any refractions. I could turn the number of samples for refractions down to zero, but that again won't affect the scene because I don't have any refractive objects. Subsurface scattering and volume direct also are not relevant to this scene. I could turn those down to zero too, just to kind of clarify what render settings I'm choosing. Then we come to the really important stuff, which is the number of samples for the camera, diffuse, and specular. And there's also one here for preview, and it's enabled, and it says preview AA. AA is anti-aliasing. When the preview switch is on, then you'll see a first preview pass in your rendering that'll look very blocky and grainy. And that's just to give you an idea of what your framing and your overall lighting is going to look like before the real rendering begins. This switch doesn't really affect render time, so you can leave it on or turn it off if you like. Below that is the camera anti-aliasing. And that's the number of samples per pixel that reach the camera sensor. And really an optimal value for this is probably a value of three for a draft quality rendering. If you want a higher quality rendering, you can turn this up. And you can see that as I increase that value, these numbers over here are changing. Let's say I set my camera anti-aliasing to a value of 10. Over here, this is the total number of samples for that component, which is the anti-aliasing. And that's an indicator that this is actually a power of two value. In other words, the number of samples is this number times itself, or this number to the power of two. 10 times 10 equals 100. For a medium quality rendering, I'll set the camera anti-aliasing samples down to seven, and seven times seven will yield 49 samples for the camera. Below that, we have the diffuse and specular components. And diffuse, of course, is the incident bounce light, the sort of ambient light that spreads throughout the scene. And I'm going to leave that at a number of samples of two, and I've set the number of rays to three. So then we have the specular as well, and the values I have here currently are going to work pretty well for a medium quality rendering. Two specular samples with only one specular ray, so the specular light will not bounce around in the scene. All right, so scrolling down a little bit, we have some very interesting parameters that we can set, namely this clamping. Arnold, because it's a stochastic renderer, is very grainy. It's a so-called brute force renderer uh, that uses a Monte Carlo or random sampling technique. Because of that, it's very grainy. And we can fight that grain or reduce the grain and reduce the appearance of very light colored or bright specks known as fireflies by enabling clamping. And what this will allow you to do is sort of even out the values in the samples. I'm gonna set my clamp max value to a actually really low value in this case of 
And what I will get from all of this is a frame that on my system currently will take about four minutes to render per frame. And it will be somewhat grainy, but it'll be a lot less grainy because I've clamped the sample values down and sort of evened them out. Okay, those are the parameters for an Arnold rendering at medium quality.